Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Praise God. I want to preach on two words there that Jesus said, I will. I will. This leper was required by law to keep his legal distance. Uh, some say 15 feet, some say 21. I don't know exactly. But he had to hold his hand over his mouth and cry, unclean, unclean, everywhere he went. And nobody, nobody was about to touch him. They, didn't, they wouldn't even get close to him. It's against the law for him to get close to anybody. But Jesus, he said, Lord, he worshiped him and said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him. Praise right. God. Saying, I will. I will. You know what Jesus said? I will. You think he meant it? Yes. Huh? Yes. Praise God. He did. Yes. Amen. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Be, not, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? What concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will, you hear all these, I will, praise God, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Yeah. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Yeah. I will receive you. He said, Behold I and the children which the Father hath given me. Praise God. I will receive you and will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. I will receive you. I will be a father unto you. I will dwell with you. I will walk with you. I will be a father unto you. Praise God. I'm trying to preach on I will. That's what the Lord said. I will. Praise God. Old brother Dexter, the world, he was, he was dying. He, he did die, I guess you could say. His spirit left his body. He had a gold blood trouble for about 10 years. And he kept praying, trying to believe the Lord. Then it set up gangrene and he was dying. And he said, he was leaving. And two words brought him back I will. I will. He said, I heard two words I will. He said, I got to, I got to looking for it after I got back. John 14 13. I wonder if we realize what this word of God really is. Uh, it's creation. It's salvation. It's sanctification. It's baptism in the Holy Ghost. It's home in heaven. It's eternity of bliss. Glory to God. It's strength to go on in this world. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything, in my name, I will do it. I read these verses a lot of times in my life. On March the 20th last year, I was trying to walk back toward the house. Went back to the pole bar and get some tools for my brother. 
he was working on the gutters there at the house. And he got up there just go for 20, 30 feet from the barn. And it started going down. Everything was going black. I'm going down. And I saw that little, little log trailer sitting there and I grabbed hold of it and sat down on the fender just, just a moment. Then I decided I could get back up and I went, went on up to my brother's pickup and I held a hang on the side of it for a while and I told my wife, I believe I can make it to the house. So I turned loose the pickup, went shuffling and stumbling, made it in the house and sat down. I said, I, I read these verses a whole lot. They always help me. But I'm just desperate after that for about six months a year. Still am, really. Uh, I read them over and over and over and over. I had my wife reading them to me in the middle of the night. Praise God. You hear what he said? If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. He said, I will. He said, I am. I am that I am. I am he who is what he is. I am he who has ever been what he is. I am he who will ever be what he is. And I am said, I will. You think he will? I know he will. Praise God. He said he would. Amen. Praise God. I said, God's word is creating word. If God came in here, if Jesus came in here, even if the Holy Ghost come in here and say, uh, Brother Raymond's got on a white shirt, there wouldn't be anything wrong with that. It'd be white as, as soon as he said it. Huh? Amen? Praise God. I said, praise God. I believe God can do anything. Right. Old brother Vince Wilson said God could take the wind from the hummingbird's wings and destroy the rope world with it and then take a gnat and build it back. Huh? Praise God. Uh, uh, some of them scoffing about uh, Jonah being in the belly of a whale. He said, you know, there's not a fish in the world that could swallow a man without killing him. And, uh, and, and no way in the world a man could survive in the belly of a fish. Uh, all those gastric acids would dissolve him in no time. Brother, I love, I love these old preachers. I, I love to listen to them. Uh, well, Brother Vince Wilson said, bless God, if the Bible said, that Jonah had electric lights and a rocking chair in there. I'd believe it. Huh? Would you? Praise God said it. I believe it. You hear what God said? God said, I will. That means he will. Huh? Hallelujah. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Isaiah told us a child is going to be born and a son is going to be given. And he said, some of them said, oh, we're going to name the baby Isaiah. And Isaiah said, his name shall be called Wonderful. Huh? What did Wonderful say? He said, I will. That all the names you got, no, let's call him counselor. He knows everything he always has. Who could be a better counselor? Praise God. And counselor says, I will. Yes. Right. Oh, okay, you got two days. No, no, there's more. The mighty God. Huh? The mighty God. And the mighty God says, I will. Amen. Praise God. I'm feeling, I'm feeling the presence of the Lord here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, you got any more names, Isaiah? That's a long name. Yes, sir. Everlasting Father. Behold, I and the children which the Father have given me, 
We're begotten by the word. Jesus is not his own father, but he's my father. Right. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. The everlasting father yeah. says, I will. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Got any more names? The Prince of Peace. And the Prince of Peace says, I will. His name is Commander and King and Leader and Sovereign and Lord and Lord of Lord and God of God and King of King. He's the first and the first says, I will. He's the last and the last says, I will. Praise God. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the first letter. He's the last letter. He's every letter in between. Praise God. He's God's alphabet. And alphabet makes words. And that's what Jesus is. The Word of God. And the Word of God said, we just read it. I will. Amen. Praise God. Now our Lord Jesus Christ Himself. And God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every, every good word and work. Now, if Jesus can't live right, you can't either. If God cannot be a God of integrity, you cannot be a man or woman of integrity. Right. If, if it's impossible, impossible for deity, the divine, to live above sin, then it's impossible for you to. But it's not. He, Paul prayed, said, and I pray that God, even our Father, uh, will comfort your heart and establish you in every good word and work. Praise God. For it is God that worketh in you both to will and to do of his good place. Praise God. I'll tell you what this once is grace, always in grace doctrine is doing. It's lying Oh my God. Huh? You're saying he can't live right when you say people can't live right because he promised over and over and over he'd make you live right if you let him. Right. Right. Huh? Right. Hi, oh God, on the time we live in. Our president said justice. He heard about this same-sex marriage decision by the Supreme Court of the United States. He said justice has struck like a bolt of lightning. What a pitiful, pitiful, pitiful little liar. Glory to God. Come on. Huh? Well, they did a survey of Americans' beliefs. Seventy-seven percent of Americans believe that there is a heaven. And seventy-six percent of Americans believe that's where they're going. Got an NIV Bible? Throw a trash can. Burn it. Do something like that with it. That's all it's good for. Huh? Uh, a woman on their translation team, a lesbian. I know that for years. I believe just last year I found out what kind of lesbian she was. She is a world champion. She flew tens of thousands of miles of preaching the gospel. That lesbians could continue to be lesbians and be, be as good a Christian as anybody in the world. I'll tell you what you are. You're an abomination to God. Huh? Yes. Amen. Well, old Jerry. Right. Jerry came to church with his girlfriend. He sat on one side of her and her husband sat on the other side of her. You got that? God have mercy. I never thought I'd live to see any such a day. Here's Jerry, and here's his girlfriend, Filipino girl, and here's her little fat husband sitting on the other side of the train. 
And uh, Jerry, Jerry just come to church because he happened to be out of jail right then. He spent probably the majority of his adult life in jail. I, I usually call him Jailbird Jerry. Uh, uh, you know, if he's not if he's not caught doing drugs, he's, he's caught uh, selling them. If he's not caught selling them, he's caught stealing so he can buy more, you know. Uh, and and uh, his, God, it was, his girlfriend said, I heard it. Uh, uh, you folks don't believe in women wearing pants, so I put me on a skirt. She did. It's about a foot long. I mean, from the waist to the bottom, I mean, about a foot, and maybe less. I said, woman, for God's sake, put you on a pair of pants so you won't be naked. Huh? Uh, and, uh, old Jerry, he's up there praying. He got right to the altar. He's praying. He's Hit that altar and he's a hollering and a carrying on and a wailing and a weeping and a praying. And his pastor had known him out all of his life, sat there beside him, how he loved him. Oh, God, please save Jerry. God have mercy on Jerry. Save him, Lord. Jerry couldn't pray no more. He quit. He looked at that pastor and said, Hey, I'm already saved. I'm praying for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Huh? Yeah. I don't have time, huh? I never do have time. I couldn't talk. I, I never could talk. I took a bad grade on a book report because I wouldn't get up in front of the class and give my book report. I, I got up to sing a song in the junior high school. Well, I, I knew they'd all like it. They'd laugh. And I walked up there and Stood there and looked at him a few seconds and went and sat back down and didn't say one word. Never could talk. I could especially couldn't talk when I got in front of people. Then I got saved. Uh, I got sanctified. Uh, Y'all believe in that, don't you? Uh, I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And then God called me to preach. I never have been much of a preacher, but I'm just as called as Apostle Paul was. I mean, God told me you're going to eat that boy and run him from the devil that you've been screaming at in your dream and wake up and cry and you can't breathe. He's going to go to hell if, if you don't preach and you're going to go with him. I said, Lord, I'm going to try to preach. I don't know how in the world I'm going to do it. I, I decided I'd write everything down. I could read. Couldn't think of my own name hardly when I got up in front of people, but at least if I had it right there in front of me, I could read. And Brother Sidney, I wrote, I wrote a long time. And, and I read it in five minutes. I said, well, it's not going to work. Huh? Didn't know how. I said, God, how in the world can I preach? I get up there, I can't think of anything. I can't say anything. It didn't turn out like that at all. I, I preached about four or five, six times and wound up one night preaching 45 minutes. That's against the rule. You know that, don't you? Uh, my dad's oldest sister, she, she's so sweet. She called everybody honey, little darling, all that. She said, Billy, honey, little darling, you're not going to be one of them long-winded preachers, are you? I said, I hope and pray to God I can, because it'd have to be a miracle. Huh? Huh? Pray, God. Amen. Uh, uh, my sister's grandson. I'm talking about I will. I'm talking about you can't, and he can't. I'm talking about you won't, but he will. Amen. Yeah. My sister grandson called me up. He uh, he been in jail quite a few times. He's been on crystal meth since he's about eleven years old. His mind's about gone. He's telling me about living with this woman. He's trying his best to get her saved. 
Huh? Yeah, and I said, Chris, you, huh, you, you need to get saved. You desperately need to get saved. He said, oh, I am saved, Brother Uncle Bill. He said, I know I still cuss a whole lot, but I can't help that. You see, aren't you glad you're saved? Aren't you, aren't you shouting happy you know God? Don't it fill your heart that you know the truth? That you're not deceived like some of these folks out here in the world? I mean, it's serious. God said, vengeance, vengeance is mine. I will, I will repay, saith the Lord. Praise God. I'm glad he will. Little lady out in Oklahoma, she's 67 years old. She's been saved all her life. She never had been to a doctor in her life. She didn't know a thing about doctors, hospitals, nothing. She got cancer and she died. That's very obvious. She's just in the bones. And her family began to beg her, Mom, please, go to the hospital for us. She said, I will for you. So she went to the hospital and they ran all these tests, put her through all that measure and torture and everything. Uh, little doctor came in, shaking his head, looking real sad. He said, I've got bad news, ma'am. Said, you've got, you've got three months at the most to live. You're going to die. You've got cancer all through you, and there's nothing we can do. I love what she said. She don't know how to talk to a doctor. She said, young man, don't you prophesy over me. <laughs> huh? Hallelujah. She said, I am going to die. I know that's the truth. But I'm not going to die until the Lord calls me home. I'm not about to die because you say so. Huh? <laughs> Oh, I wish we had more faith in God than we have in our doctor. He's a whole lot better doctor. Praise God. Well, she did die. She was 87 when she died. That's 20 years after the doctor told her she had a couple months. Huh? Amen. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I thought we read that this morning. That's something school. Praise God. Amen. Come on. He even says, I will to the lost. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. You can't find soul rest anywhere else except in Jesus. Praise God. He's got enough for everybody in the world. For my yoke is easy. His love makes it easy. Right. And my burden is light. His love makes it light. Praise God. Hallelujah. Some folks act like homeless. is some kind of uh, drudgery. Some kind of old hard job. I tell you what it is. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, yeah. Nobody in the wide world is as happy as homeless people. You can't be holy and not be happy. And you can't be happy and not be holy. That's just the way it is. Praise God. God amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Well, what, what, what do you think the answer might possibly be, preacher? Do you reckon if all the homos got saved, things would change? Do you reckon if all these drug addicts could be cured, things would get better? I'll tell you what God's answer is. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I will hear, hear, I will forgive, I will heal their land. Great. I like what Jeremiah said, 17, 14. Heal me, O Lord, I shall be healed. Save me, I shall be saved, for thou art my praise.
Glory to God. Somebody like to say glory to God. Hey, man, would anybody in here like to say hallelujah? Glory to God. Yeah. I got a boy that's not saved. Anybody else got any children not saved? Huh? I want you to listen to this. And just shout about it. Isaiah 49, 25, but thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will, I will, that's what I'm trying to preach on, I will, I will contend with him that contendeth with thee, and I will save thy children. shall condemn this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me said the Lord uh, I didn't think about that murmur and complaining again man said come on go to church with me that sinner man said why he said Get saved. Get right with God. He said, you mean get that kind of religion you got? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. He said, I'm mean enough the way it is. I grumble and growl and gripe and complain enough the way it is. I sure don't need what you got. Huh? Amen. I'll tell you what we need. We need to let our light so shine before men that they'll glorify our Father which is in heaven. And they'll say they've got exactly what I have to have. Huh? Yeah. Hey, Amen. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold, casting down imagination. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought right. to the obedience of Jesus Christ. You know anybody else can put thoughts in jail? Huh? You don't want to believe I'll just keep serving Jesus. Praise God. He said, I will. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Yes. Yes. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Yes. When he hears, we have. And he does hear. He has ears and he can hear. Yes. Yes. There's a gentleman out there in Arkansas, he got to a place, devil worked on his heart and mind, he thought God wouldn't hear him. And old brother Wayne Dillard heard about it and went out there to see him. Another brother or two went with him. And he left an old brother Wayne. A whole lot of people did. He lived to be about 100 years old. And he went out there and his brother, he said, God won't hear you. Yeah. He just won't hear me no more, Brother Wayne. He said, well, cuss him while. He said, why no? No, I can't do that. He said, why not? He said, God will hear <laughs> He said, you got a God that'll hear you cuss and won't hear you pray? Huh? You reckon if you cuss, God will hear you? you? You know if you pray, he hears that too. And you know if he hears your petitions, then you have 
the petition that you asked of him, he said, so I'll believe him anytime. I'll stake my life on it. He's telling the truth. <laughs> Glory to God. I said, and God tells nothing but the truth. Yeah. Amen. He will hear our famous cry. He will answer. Bye bye. Praise God. The devil said, no way. God says, I say. The devil said, no deal. God said, I will. I, I struck down that heart attack. They gave me one to three days to live. That was the 20th of March in 2014. I about lived their prediction quite a bit. Praise God. I, I didn't preach. Full time evangelist. Didn't preach one time in 79 days. No more time. I just went to church about two or three times. As long as I can get one foot in front of the other, get my clothes on, stagger out the car, and go to church. I never had missed a day of church, night, one night or day of church in my life since I've been saved 30 some years because I was too sick to make it. I'd like Brother Mike Matson, he said to his people at his church, he said, don't call in, crawl in. He said, you come in here, we'll pray a prayer of faith, and God heal you, you go home well. I, did, I, I called Brother Jimmy Stop. He called me, I can't remember. We were talking. Before we hung up, he said, why don't you come down and preach for me Saturday night? I said, oh, well, I can't. So, come Saturday, I was feeling horrible, dragging around, barely couldn't walk, staggering, weak, shaking. Wife said, you feel like going? I said, no way, no kind of way. Certainly don't feel like going. She said, you going? I said, I am if I can. I'm gonna try. I got down there and sat on the front pew he got three little steps going up to his platform. I said, looked at them. I said, God, please help me. I'm not able to make it up there if you don't help me. So he called on me to preach, and I went to the steps, and I made it up. It is making me sick. It's taking every ounce of strength I had. But I made it. I got on the platform, and the Bible stand here, opened up my Bible, started trying to read my verse. Everything just started going. And uh, I, I just ready to hit the floor. I said, we'll have to go sit down. This is not going to work. I heard the sweetest voice say, I'm right here with you. I'll help you. I said, well, maybe it is going to work too. <laughs> huh? Praise God. Amen. I don't, I don't wish for anybody to get sick. Uh, but I, I, don't, I didn't wish I could get sick, and I sure wish to have, but I've learned a lot of things I probably never would have known. I, I, I've, got, I've got more love in my heart for God than I ever had, because I know how he held me up when there wasn't no way. You know, I'm fixing clothes. I don't know about here, about every place I go, 12 o'clock noon to old fish and quick time. <laughs> All they do is look at the clock and, and hey, hey, he had a little hush, you know, things like that at 12 o'clock. So, uh, I'm, I'm fixing clothes. Brother B.P. Carroll said, as I continue to close, you know, the Bible said, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You know, Elisha told his servant, there's more with us than there are with them. Hey, you know we're on the winning side? You know, you all understand we have the majority? Huh? Just you and God, that's more than anything could ever come against you. 
He said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. That song said, stand still and let God move. If God be for us, that little boy said, the devil's up against him. Huh? Praise God. If God be for us, who can be against us? Right, right. It don't matter who can be against us. They can't do anything. They're found happily fighting against God. They can. Jesus told us, without me, ye can do nothing. What do you reckon the world can do? Less than nothing. Paul said, I'm persuaded that neither death he wasn't talking about that sister there. Wouldn't shake your hand right there and one night when, when she was, I don't know what's the matter with her. She had some kind of she, I don't know what's the matter with her. Uh, he wasn't talking about all these real important things. He said his afflictions were light. He endured but a moment. How long have you been going through it, Paul? About 30 years. Huh? Yeah. Ain't been nothing heavy, huh? No, he said just five times he got beat with the whips and the fight and I don't know how many times with rods and and they spit in my face, they kicked me around, they threw me in prison, they put me in the stocks. They uh, I've been shipwrecked the night and the day, been shipwrecked three times, the night and the day I spent in the deep. He said I've been stoned and dragged out of the city and left for dead. Just like that, you know. Well, nothing beside them heavy afflictions you've been enduring, right? Huh? Praise God. I know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to act like the strong one and trying to look, look down on you because these things about got you killed. I'm the one that fell over about three or four different times and told my wife, I can't stand no more. I give up. It's over. I quit. I'm through. I can't take it. Of course, she always said, you can't do that, honey. You got to keep trying. You got to get up. And after a little bit, I'd say, you're right. Huh? She right, wasn't she? Praise God. Man, it's hard. Three o'clock in the morning, Nobody around. All of the people that love you. All of the people call and send messages. I'm praying for you. We're your friend. We're pulling for you. Ain't none of them around. Not one message on the old phone. Huh? Still can't breathe. Still can't lay down. Sitting in that old recliner, looking at my bed. I'd give anything in the world if I could go over there and lay down. I lay down and I start dying real fast. I sit over here and just die real slow. I'm drowning. I'm drowning. I'm, I'm, I'm dying if I lay down. I said it's awful to get so sick you can't hold your head up. And I mean, maybe it'd even be worse if you get so sick you can't lay down. Huh? Nights get long. Nights get dark. Uh, pain, it's hard. It's hard to endure after months of it. It's all hard. Ain't it? Yeah, it is. I know it is. I couldn't love people and sympathize with them, empathize with them like I can now. I, I had pain all my life. When I was a little boy, I'd go to sleep crying, my ear hurting. I'd go to sleep crying, my heels hurting. I'd go to sleep crying, my Knees hurt. That pain, that bad pain all my life. Lord, I didn't know what pain was. Until it hits you so hard you go in convulsions, just jerk all over, can't stop. Huh? I didn't know. I do now. God understands. He knows all about me. He knows of my hopes. He 
knows of my plan, he's willing to help, if we will but follow, he knows all about us, God understands, praise God, amen. Stand on your feet. Uh, come into these altars. Let's believe. Right here on Sunday morning, let's believe God. Let's receive from Him. Let's leave here shouting happy. You reckon we could? He says you can. Amen. God is here. And God says, I will. Amen. There's a whole lot of things I'd like to try to preach. Brother L.L. Collins said that dirty dog devil clock. He said it's time to quit. No way around it. We're creatures of time. And we live in time. We're going to die in time. Praise God. But God's the eternal God. Time doesn't bother him at all. Right. He made time. He made temporalities for those who are temporal. Huh? He never needed it. 